We're in King George Square. We're coming to Stop the Cuts rally. Um, it is uh, Queensland Council of Unions has organised a day of action against the Newman Cuts. Um, that's going to be on Wednesday, the 12th of September, as shown on the flyer here. Um, there's a, a rally coming up, a day of action, statewide community. Um, it's, it's coming up on the Wednesday, the 12th of September, and actually there's going to be a contingent in that statewide community day of action, which will be the Stop the Cuts Queensland Uncut contingent. So that's what we've got on today. Uh, Professor John Wiggins, he's an economist, um, he's uh, a professor at UQ um, and uh, Australian Research Council Federation Fellow and Laureate Fellow at UQ. Please welcome John Wiggins. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks for inviting me to, to speak here. Um, I guess if you don't follow politics all that closely, this kind of um, exercise that we've seen the human government go through uh, can seem pretty stark. That is, they get somebody in to look over the books and they discover all these um, all these terrible holes in the books and then announce that the state is on the edge of bankruptcy heading for the pinnacle status of, uh, of uh, Italy and Spain and so forth. What I want to start by saying is that this is absolutely standard practice. There hasn't been a coalition government elected anywhere in the country in the past 15 years that hasn't elected a commission of audit, hasn't appointed a commission of audit, and hasn't been a commission of audit that hasn't found exactly the same thing. But the government needs to dump its election promises and introduce drastic cuts. So The Greens in Queensland stand with you 100% in supporting your struggle and your fight. We are keen to work together with the unions, with workers, with community organisations, with people who are affected. And that means pretty much everybody in Queensland. But let's remember it's, it's speech on election night where he promised he would govern humbly where he promised not to breach his pre-election commitments and where he promised to govern not just for those who voted for him but for all Queenslanders Such a mess. 
massive majority, with such a massive majority, they could have spared a little compassion. One would have thought that with such a massive majority, they could have shown a bit more heart. But no, the big, powerful power brokers of the LNP immediately line up to attack Queensland's most vulnerable, Queensland's most marginalised and Queensland's, Queensland's poorest members of society. And Not once has it said we are responsible for what we're doing. It's the previous state government to blame. It's the federal Labor government to blame. It's the unions to blame. It's the public servants to blame. It is a load of rubbish. And I'll tell you what else is a load of rubbish. The four-pillar economy. The four-pillar economy. Where in the four pillar economy do you see the community? Where do you see community services that inject almost $3 billion into this state annually, that employ almost 60,000 workers? Well, not anymore. Where do you see that in the four pillar economy? Nowhere. Nowhere. Because this is a government that, that doesn't believe that the economy is there to serve the community. The community is there to serve the economy. And now they want to now they want to gag the community organisations. Many of you would have seen that new service agreements are going to be delivered with a gag clause. So, so you can have your money, you can have your money, but you can't speak out on government policy. You can have your money. You can have your money, but you can't advocate for legislative change. You can have your money, but you can't look after, in any sort of political or advocacy way, the people that you serve. You cannot do that. So, they're gagging the community sector and now they're ridiculing it. Today in the Parliament, one after the other, one MP after the other got up and called you a renter crowd, called you illegitimate, that your concerns, your concerns are baseless. Without those services, those young people might end up in jail. People will be um, more entrenched in domestic violence, like it has such a multiplying effect. So th their concern firstly is for the people that those services um, are there for. And then on top of that, they know that they are going to lose their jobs. They know that they probably won't be able to get a job back in the sector. And so the work that they so had such passion to do, they won't be able to do because there won't be the jobs in the sector. That's right, and that's the next point. Thank you. <laughs> we are losing a huge amount of skill in the sector. When these people leave these jobs, they'll have to find jobs in other parts of the economy, and the high level of skill that's been developed over 30, 40 years will be lost in this in the Queensland. And it will take, you know, many, many years to rebuild, even if they decide to um, refund some of the programs. So I think... That, we have, to, we have to say we want our highly skilled workforce to stay in Queensland. Yeah. And I don't know whether people are aware, but the small and medium-sized organisations, they, they do bundle together funding from different government departments at different levels of government. And, and they're there because they, they know that they can serve their communities. But you take one program out and they might be able to survive. If you start taking a couple of programs and we start losing these really important community organisations. So, so we don't want to lose our community infrastructure. We need our community infrastructure to stay in place and this government is responsible for maintaining that infrastructure.
about um, a government that says that they're economic um, managers because what I see is an incredible amount of waste. True. The community yeah. organisations that have to shut down after 30, 40, 30 or 40 years of providing a service to a community, I say that's waste. Yeah. Yeah. For a neighbourhood centre to, who has been at the heart of their centre to actually have to close its doors, it doesn't make economic sense when they don't actually require lots of money to, to keep them operating. And then of course there are the, the partners that come together and we, we all um, support each other to build the infrastructure in our communities. I mean, one organisation I know, they have to actually leave their premises because they can't afford to stay where they are um, operating. So now they have to leave, leave all the infrastructure that they built with program money to do the services and go and locate somewhere else. Now I say that's waste. Of course, the, the, what happens in the sector is that we, we hear that one, one organisation's lost funding and another one's lost funding and, and, and everyone's feeling quite isolated and, and I suppose I actually just want us to give a cheer to all the workers that can't be here tonight. They can't, they can't get here. And they know they're all incredibly distressed about what's happening. But so there's, there's incredible solidarity here that you're all here tonight. But th they also um, are, are with you here tonight. <laughs> so I say to the government, we want to talk to you. We want to work in partnership with government. We want to build our community because we care about them. So please come and work for us. We want to survive. We want to be here working for our communities and, um, and that really is our message. We want to survive, we will survive and um, with all your support we will. So thank you. <laughs>